Today I will discuss about bulk modulus. So welcome to my YouTube channel Mechanical Engineering Management. So let's start first terminology bulk modulus and try to understand the same terminology with the help of this figure. Here you can see this is actually the uniform pressure that is applied on this volume. So initial volume that is actually represented by the dotted black line. So this is the original volume and due to this pressure the volume is changed and that is represented by brown color. So here it is written that is the final volume. So initial volume is capital V and final volume is capital V minus delta V. So the change in volume due to this pressure is delta V. So it is used to measure the elastic properties of a solid or a fluid when pressure is applied on all surfaces. So this is actually represent as importance or you can say the significance of bulk modulus. So once again bulk modulus is used to measure the elastic properties of a solid or a fluid when pressure is applied on all surfaces. Here you can see. Bulk modulus is a measure of the ability of a substance to withstand changes in volume when under compression on all sides. So again bulk modulus is a measure of ability of a substance to withstand changes in volume when under compression on all sides. Bulk modulus is defined as the ratio of volumetric stress or sometimes it is called as applied pressure to the volumetric strain of any material. So you can say simply bulk modulus is the ratio of volumetric stress to the volumetric strain. So you can say bulk modulus is the ratio of the volumetric stress or applied pressure to its volumetric strain. So here in this figure I have shown the body is subjected to the applied pressure small p. It can be subjected to the normal stress. So at that time you can say it is a volumetric stress. So mathematically you can say bulk modulus k is equal to applied pressure p upon volumetric strain epsilon v. Now importance of bulk modulus. So try to understand these important properties. So here first column is the material and second column is the bulk modulus k and the unit is gigapascal. So here look at this bulk modulus of the aluminium that is 70 and bulk modulus of the copper is 140. So try to understand the bulk modulus with the help of this aluminium and copper. So here from the table you can see the value of the bulk modulus of copper is 140 gigapascal that is actually two times the value of the aluminium here you can see. Thus only half ratio is needed to reduce the aluminium sphere compared to the copper sphere of the same initial size. So again it is very important so try to understand only half pressure is required to reduce the aluminium sphere if you compare it with the copper sphere of the same initial size because of the aluminium has half bulk modulus than copper. So half pressure is required for the aluminium than copper. In another word you can say under equal pressure the proportional decrease in volume of aluminium is 2 times than copper. One may also say that aluminium is 2 times more compressible than copper. In fact, compressibility is defined as the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. So in another word you can say bulk modulus is the reciprocal of the compressibility. Or you can say compressibility is the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. In another word you can say if bulk modulus is higher 
So obviously you can say the compressibility is less. So here you can see aluminum has the less bulk modulus. So it is more compressible than the copper. A substance that is difficult to compress has a large bulk modulus but a small compressibility. A substance that is easy to compress has a high compressibility but low bulk modulus. Because of you know that compressibility and bulk modulus is actually indirectly proportional. Thanks my dear friend for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate it.